You're live. So. Hi everybody, it's Renee Pokoy. Welcome. Today is going to be all about kombucha. And we have Drew in the house again, helping out with uh, questions. So I hope you made a list of questions because I'd like for you to be able to ask them if I don't cover it. So I'm all about this being an interactive evening. So again, it's Renee with Organic Stepping Stones. Uh, we're gonna give a half a minute for some people to log on before we get started. But again, the topic is kombucha, which is a fermented beverage. So I'm excited to share this with all of you. I've uh, been doing fermentation for over eight years now. Name it, I've tried to ferment it. Uh, kombucha was my first. Jim Kraft just joined us. Hey Jim, so glad you're tuning in tonight. You need to start brewing your own kombucha, man. It's the best, way better than store-bought, that's for sure. So yeah, kombucha is really easy to make. Basically, if you can make yourself a cup of tea, you can make some kombucha. What do you think, Drew? Should we get started or should we give another half a minute for some people to come on? Uh, we, could, we could get started. Okay, we're going to get started. Okay, um, I guess let's start with why kombucha? We could probably wait for a, a half a minute though for a couple more people to come on. A half a minute for a couple more people. So like I was talking about fermentation, uh, literally I have fermented everything from green tomatoes to dilly green beans which I had with dinner tonight to mustard and salad dressing and ketchup and sauerkraut kimchi, ginger soda, strawberry soda. Um, kombucha by far is our favorite. I've dabbled in water kefir, milk kefir. Um, for me, our, our beverage of choice is kombucha. We really don't have soda in the house. You will find here kombucha, plenty of it. We have water, raw milk, and uh, yep, that's about it. <laughs> so those are your beverages. Again, we're, we're looking to live a healthier lifestyle, and by having a healthier lifestyle, we have healthier bodies, we're able to do more and be there for one another, especially right now, we need to be there for one another. So, why do fermentation? It helps to bring the live microbes into our digestive gut, and so if you know me, you hear me say all the time, healthy gut, healthy body, our immune system is directly related to our gut, so we're talking between 70 and 80% of our immune system is gut related. So we have literally over two pounds of live microbes. The question is, are yours the good ones or the not so good? Because there's always a balance that has to go on there. Certainly. So Victoria just joined us as well. Welcome, Victoria. Thanks for tuning in tonight. So we could probably get going. If everyone, that'd be excellent if everyone wanted to like and share the live stream so we could, uh, and, and Renee's about to get us going, so if you could. Yes, I am. So we were talking about the direct connection of the gut and health. And Nancy just joined us as well. Welcome, Nancy. Thanks for coming on tonight. And there is also a direct connection from the brain to the gut, the vagus nerve. So again, healthy gut, you're thinking clear, you are more focused. So. A really easy, easy way to get started in fermentation is kombucha. And like I mentioned earlier, if you can make a cup of hot tea, you can make kombucha. So we'll start off with what are those ingredients? Super, super simple. We're going to use a cup of organic sugar. And I don't know if you can quite tell. This is kind of like off color, like yellow. And that's because it is organic and it hasn't been bleached. Um, I like to purchase it from Costco because I can get a large bag of the organic sugar at a very reasonable price. That's basically what I use sugar for is for kombucha. And a lot of times people will say, but Renee, I don't want sugar. I'm trying to stay away from that. And I agree completely. But the sugar is not for you. The sugar is for your SCOBY. And what is a SCOBY? See these little things at the bad boy in my jar? This is called a SCOBY, and it means uh, stands for Symbiotic Colony of Bacteria and Yeast. And just to give you guys an idea, the SCOBY always starts to grow the new ones from the top down. So the older SCOBYs will be on the bottom. So if I wanted to go in here, and I just want to show you how this starts to layer the SCOBYs, 
and they kind of come across like pancakes. And so as it starts to get too thick, you can start removing some of these pancakes or scobies and you'll leave one in uh, for the fermentation process. Whoo, I guess I'm on a roll here. I just gotta get it all in, let me get it all in. <laughs> so that is your scoby. And uh, we're gonna start, I said, with one cup of sugar and we've got two cups of, or two tablespoons of tea. It's really important um, to use organic because conventional tea has been sprayed with all kinds of herbicides, insecticides. I've actually seen videos of people in full gear with oxygen and mask spraying fields of tea leaves. You know, we don't want those chemicals in our body. Another reason for doing fermentation is not only to bring the microbes to help break down our food, to make nutrients more bioavailable, and to help clean out. And whenever we start, we always want to go slow. Because the first time I made kombucha, I didn't know what I was doing. And it tasted so delicious. And one afternoon, I drank three gigantic glasses of kombucha. The bathroom was my best friend for several hours. So anytime you're bringing something new on, like fermentation, that we're going to clean out, we don't want to have die off too fast so you want to consume a little bit at a time so what i have here in this pot is i brought my water to a boil i shut it off i added the two tablespoons of organic tea and the cup of sugar i stirred it i did this earlier and made it cool so in my jar i have what i call some starter all that means is kombucha from the previous batch and my scoby I'm going to take a strainer because I don't want the tea leaves in there. And I'm just going to pour this in my jar. And whenever you're doing any fermentation, notice this is glass. And basically everything you see on the table here is either glass or stainless steel. You want to stay away from plastic because plastic, the fermentation process is going to pull all of those chemicals and toxins into, into your kombucha. And so you're kind of defeating the purpose. So if you are buying uh, kombucha or fermented stuff, I always recommend buying it in glass and you don't want it pasteurized. If it's pasteurized, you're basically, you're killing the whole purpose of doing the fermentation. And fermentation is not new, you guys. This stuff has been around for forever. So we've kind of lost touch with it and it's coming back in right now. And when I say coming back in, because we realize how important it is for our health. I poured more water into the pot. I could have done it here. I just want to get all the goodness out of the tea leaves and out of the sugar. Oh, and I think I started to mention about the sugar. Renee, I'm trying to stay away from it. Okay, the sugar is for the SCOBY. The sugar is not for you. It's just like, you know, when I'm getting uh, grass-fed beef, I don't eat grass, but I want my cows to eat grass because that's what they need. So the same principle here. Uh, some people say, can I use uh, honey? You can't, but if you were to get a different culture called June, then you can use honey. But to combine with this one, it's a conflicting culture, and it will kill. And I've even had some people say, well, let's add a little bit of vinegar to this. It'll kill the scoby. It'll kill the scoby, yes. Um, and you don't want to even add vinegar with the mother in it because they get, that would be, again, another competing culture. So again, you always want to use glass. And when I'm filling it up, notice I'm only going to the shoulder of the glass. If you go too high, and I've done it before, literally the scope, it kind of starts growing out of the container and I didn't understand why there was liquid all over my counter. So just keep it here. And you will notice that right now the scope is like in the middle of the jar and that's okay. Sometimes it'll start off in the bottom. Sometimes it's here, sometimes it's sideways, eventually, it'll get to the top. And I wanted to show you on this one, you can actually see the SCOBY is on the side and on the top, there's what's this thin film. This is actually a brand new SCOBY growing. Like I said, they always start from the top and it'll start off clear like almost gel and they will continue to multiply. When we're doing this, it's really important 
um, that you don't add any teas that have oils in it, like Earl Grey has oil in so it. So you're getting really deep into the teas and the complexities of it. So in simple steps from the top again, how do you make kombucha? If you were to number them in simple, easy steps, take us to where we are right now with the types of tea, please. Okay, simple steps. Fill your pot with a clean water. Not from the tap, because it has chlorine and fluoride, it'll kill your culture or your scoby. Filtered, reverse osmosis, whatever you Fill your pot, bring it to a water. Two tablespoons of tea, one cup of sugar, stir. Let cool to room temperature. Add it to your glass vessel. Bring it to the shoulder. That already has a scoby in it. That already has the scoby and a little bit of kombucha from a previous batch. And then I like to write the date on it. This is the last batch, so I have to add a new one. And you can just use a Sharpie. It comes off with hot soapy water. I'll write today's date and I'll write a D because this one happened to be Darjeeling that I used today. And then I will simply take, you could use an old dishcloth, any type of fabric, and put a rubber band on it. And I'm going to let it sit. And usually for most people's homes, it's going to be 10 days to two weeks. And what is before your kombucha is going to be ready because if you were to taste it right now with one cup of sugar to a gallon of tea oh to me it is really really nasty sweet uh, way too sweet for me so when you and get, that's why we let it wait the time because it needs to ferment and that means it eats the sugar sugar in the tea so we are not consuming the sugar and that's what you were talking about before correct correct it is where the sugar is for the scoby and the culture. If you were to let this go long enough, which sometimes I kind of forget about it, you will end up with straight vinegar. And don't throw that out. You can see I have a jar, written vinegar on there. And this is vinegar that I could use for marinades, for cleaning, whatever you would normally use, you know, vinegar for. So, you know, don't throw that out, you know, keep your vinegar. A good way to test to see, like this one has been going for a while. The date on here is 321, so I know it's not ready. But if I want to test, I can take a straw, push it down in the side of my scoby, just let it go in my mouth, and I can taste it to see, ooh, do I like it? Is it too sweet? Is it too sour? And then you can adjust the taste, uh, the flavor profiles. And... You, like some people say, well, I want a flavor like strawberry or pineapple. You never add fruit in the beginning. That's when we get right. into what's called, because again, it's going to kill your scoby. You will end up with mold and other issues. So never any fruit and never any oils in the initial brewing process. What, how do I, how do you get it to taste like strawberry then or fruit? Okay, that would be when we would have our second ferment. So when my batch is ready... What does that mean, second ferment? I thought you said I couldn't put it in there. You can't. So when it's ready and you taste it and you're like, okay, this tastes like kombucha and it doesn't taste like really sweet tea water anymore, you can then pour it into different kind of vessels. If I'm doing a second ferment, I like to use something with a wide mouth. So I will pour my kombucha in here. And this one actually happens to have a does, cinnamon stick. Does second ferment mean you poured it out and then you poured it back in with a different scoby? No. You never add fruit with a scoby. When it's done, I just poured the liquid. Like this is just clear liquid. This is just kombucha. The scoby is all done because I don't want to kill my scoby. Oh, it means that you just added fruit. Fruit, fruit juice. Yes, you can add awesome. a variety of different things. Thank you. After the initial brew process so like this one and I've already drank some and it kind of tastes like apple pie um, I just added slices of apples and a cinnamon stick and then I'm gonna let this sit on my counter for two days and from there you could strain it off or you could just put it in the refrigerator and then you could go ahead and drink that um, if you're doing it in the flip top bottles like this Michelle asked what's the SCOBY the SCOBY is the culture you're using, and it stands for a symbiotic colony of bacteria and yeast. So that is how you're doing the fermentation is with the SCOBY. 
So you're actually feeding the SCOBY and it transforms it. So if you were to literally taste, and normally when I do in-person classes, I have several varieties of kombucha for people to taste. Where are your classes normally at? So when they do get started up, people can check them out. Uh, you will find listing for classes on Organic Stepping Stones Facebook page, on the website, but usually I'm at the Harrison Township Library. I'm also at the Oak Park Community Center. I have been down at the Eastern Market, Berkeley, Ferndale Library, so a lot of different locations. They could probably ask you where your next classes are in the comments if they wanted to know, but Victoria asks, is that something you buy or make? I'm assuming she's referring to the SCOBY. The SCOBY, uh, you can try making the SCOBY and some people have even been successful even with store-bought kombucha and it will create a SCOBY in there. Um, or you can get one from a friend or I even have kombucha kits that I have made available that is everything that you need to make three gallons of kombucha. And the reason why I did that was because I constantly had people, Renee, where do I get the SCOBY? Where do I get the gallon glass jar? Where are the instructions? So literally everything in there is available if, if you were interested in purchasing that. Or like I said, if you have a friend that has a SCOBY, I showed you how much they multiply, and it's very easy to get a SCOBY that way also. And Sue and Barb did join us. Barb a little bit earlier. Sue just joined Hi, Sue. Hi, Barb. We're talking kombucha tonight, and we're brewing, and how easy that it is. So when I was talking about the second ferment, so the first one is black tea is normally what we want to use. She said that's what I was going to ask next. <laughs> yeah, black tea should be your kind of go-to tea. And that could be, like I have Darjeeling, I have um, Assam, English Breakfast, uh, you know, there are a few other ones in there. Cylon kind of makes it taste like an you, apple cider. Yeah, a, a lot of thumbs up on that one. Oh, Cylon, Cylon's a good one. All right. And then I will also do a green tea sometimes, either jasmine or gunpowder. Jenny just joined us. As well. Hi, Jenny. Glad you're on tonight with kombucha. What will not support your SCOBY is white tea, because my sister tried it, and her SCOBYs were dying. Um, and you cannot do an herbal tea. Now what you can do is, like you can see how this one has a really pretty red color to it. On the initial brew, I did the two tablespoons of the black tea, and I added a teaspoon of dry hibiscus flowers. So I'm pulling those medicinal properties from the hibiscus, again, but it's not a fruit. So I could do that in the initial brew, and that's what turned this into this beautiful pink color, which is kind of our family favorite. And I know Dawn, she said, that's the only thing the kids want is the salmon and the hibiscus. So I could even do others. Like if you're dealing with a health issue, you could look up what herbs medicinally will help with that. And you could add some of that in, into your first brew. And literally just by changing the tea, it gives it a completely different taste. Like for my family, I'll get crazy and I'll do this one like apple pie. And they're like, yeah, it's okay, mom. But we really just like the plain, I'm like, yes, let's work on my part. I don't have to go through that second ferment. What I also want to mention on the second ferment, if you're doing the flip top bottles, pressure will begin to building these. And you can actually get carbon, you know, like soda going on in there. And so that's why I always say, I don't really like to go more than two days because you never know how much pressure is going to be there, particularly if you do th something like, uh, crushed strawberries. Okay, that just boom, boom on the fermentation, and you can get a lot of pressure going on that. So you, you want to be careful with pressure. Um, originally, I started with all mason type jars. I did not have the flip top bottles. Like this is uh, an empty jar from apple cider vinegar, you know, uh, with a mother in it. So any kind of glass is fine. You don't have to go out and spend special money you know, when you're doing kombucha. Except for the kit. Well, except for the kit. Because but, you don't want to use plastic and you want the right ingredients, yes. including sugar, tea, and you want the right scoby. 
and water. Water is really important. So here's the question. Well, you don't get the water in the kit, but when you do fill right. it, you want to make sure to use the correct water. Right. You don't want water with chlorine and fluoride that will kill your culture. So uh, you you had a couple. I'm sorry for cutting you off, but you had, yeah. you had a couple questions earlier uh, on the phone. Uh, you had some people talking to you regarding they used to make kombucha, but then they stopped because the tastes started changing over time. Can you expand on that a little bit? Why would over why would that happen over time? Why 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 do, and how how can they prevent things like that happening? Temperature is a huge factor. How in much is the kit? Michelle wants to know. Uh, and Angela joined us. And Angela. Hi Angela, glad you came on. The kits are 75 and that includes the 15 to 20 dollars for shipping that goes into that because of the weight of all of the glass and stuff. So I, I can get those shipped out in boxes. And how many how many gallons does the kit make? It makes three. So you have three different types of teas in it. You have three cups of sugar, the scoby, the starter, strainer, the fabric cloth, rubber band, instructions, and my contact information because I don't ever want to leave anybody stranded like in the beginning. My family's like, do you know what you're doing? I'm like, yeah, I do. I was clueless. I didn't have a clue, but I did not tell the family. I held strong and when was my conviction? I knew exactly what I was doing and I didn't. <laughs> They can hear that now because it's been over eight years and it doesn't matter anymore because sometimes it's a need to know basis and they don't always need to know, right? <laughs> well, anyways, we'll go on. <laughs> oh, back to, back to case profiles. Um, again, I got Drew in the house helping me out here. Uh, temperature plays a huge role. For instance, a friend of mine would keep her kombucha on the outside wall of her house. Her walls were not insulated. So in the winter time, it was taking over a month for the fermentation process because the temperature was too cold. She had to move it into an inner wall. If in the summertime, if you don't have air condition and the temperature in your house is creeping up to 75, 80 degrees, your kombucha might be ready in five to seven days. And so temperature plays a big role. And if you have under cabinet lights, or you know, if you're putting it by toaster ovens, again, you don't want to cook your kombucha. What do you got for me, Drew? No, Jenny was just saying, ha ha ha, too funny. <laughs> so yes, temperature is a huge factor. <laughs> I have mine between the refrigerator and the stove, and I have, I decreased, I used to have seven gallons, I now have five gallons in rotation. So like I will have today's, I will write on here with the Sharpie what it is, and then I can check from dates because I always think I'm going to remember the date and the flavor of tea. Yeah, that's not happening come, you know, 10 days to two weeks later. So again, you want to start slowly when you're consuming kombucha. Always do glass. And hey, if you have more questions, come on, I'm used to a, a give and take people. What, what do you got for me? So I, I think we have a, a bunch of new users from when we started. I'm sure there's a couple that have hung with us, but if you could go through the steps of making kombucha quickly again. Sure. So, and then if there's any questions that people have while she's blowing through the steps in a, a very quick format, please feel free to ask them in, in, in the comments. And Sally just joined us, so it would be perfect hey, to, Sally. to go through Excellent. the steps. Before I go through that, I want to make one other comment and you know, here's another jar. You're that... welcome, Sue. I got you. <laughs> She's thanking me, not you, but you can continue. Perfect. And no. that's, that's, that's my dream house, okay? Um, and here's another one where you can see that I have the SCOBY and some of the fluid at the bottom. I am not going to dump this out and scrub this down. This is its own little ecosystem. So I don't want to have to have it repopulate its home every time. So I'm just going to leave this and just again continue to fill. So literally, I'm going to put water. So step one. Step one, get a pot. <laughs> step two, fill it with clean water, filtered water, reverse osmosis, distilled spring, not tap water. Chlorine and fluoride are not good for your culture. That's for your SCOBY. Right, the SCOBY. SCOBY stands for Symbiotic Colony of Bacteria and Yeast. So we'll call it a culture. Or a culture. <laughs> 
Bring your water to a boil. Step I'm going to shut it off. Step three. I'm adding two tablespoons of organic tea. Not conventional. It really needs to be organic. One cup of organic sugar. Stir it. Let it come to room temperature. Don't know what number I'm on. I'm going to have my jar from a previous batch that has the SCOBY and the starter in it. I'm going to put my strainer on the top to catch the tea leaves. And since I already poured it, I'm going to pour the cooled water. Because if it's hot, again, I'm going to kill my culture. And I'm going to fill it. So that's important to know. You got, After you boil it, you have to let it cool. Cool to Otherwise, you kill it just like if you had tap water. Yes. And then I'm going to fill to the shoulder of the jar. I'm going to label it with my Sharpie, the date, and the letter of the type of tea. I'm going to cover it. And I'm going to let it sit for 10 days to two weeks. And voila, that's it. Okay, people, anybody can make kombucha. What if you don't have a previous and you're making for the very first time? Um, Victoria asked. Um, I'm assuming she's asking about the SCOBY. So. Well, usually if somebody's giving you a SCOBY, you would ask them for some kombucha from that batch. So that's all that is, is the starter is just some kombucha oh, from the previous batch. It. And it comes, if you show them in the, with the SCOBY, that, and you shake it a little bit, there is kombucha, yeah, in, there's there kombucha in there enough to use as a starter. Yes, yes, absolutely, absolutely. Did that, did that answer your question, Victoria? Sue asks, what about the hibiscus one? And Victoria says, two thumbs up. All right, Thank the hibiscus one, uh, I'm doing the two tablespoons of tea, and I like to do a teaspoon of hibiscus. Well, uh, you can use any tea. Any black tea, yes. Does hibiscus come in the kit? It does not, but I have some available if you would like me to put some in your kit. I could do that. I could put three teaspoons of hibiscus in there. I got you covered. I, I bought a pound of it, so I have a bit to last for a while, <laughs> since it is the family favorite. And again, why are we drinking kombucha? Because if you have taken antibiotics, steroids, or birth control pills, you have killed off all of the good and all of the bad bacteria in your gut. And so we want to help replenish that. Um, think of a forest fire. This lush, beautiful forest fire comes through. We got to start with new regrowth. So we're helping bring that back in. Um, I know a friend of mine, if their family is drinking kombucha, they don't take their probiotic that day because they're getting it through kombucha or through sauerkraut or like I had dilly green beans with my dinner today. You know, so different ways to bring that in. So we're bringing it in because we want the live microbes. We want to help break down the food. It's helping with our immune system. And when our immune system is weakened, that's when you start coming out with autoimmune diseases. Victoria asks, how often do you drink it? And it sounds like Sue wants some hibiscus tea. She says, it's so good. <laughs> Sue, I can help you out with hibiscus, no problem. Uh, we drink kombucha daily here. Uh, that's a personal preference. I know I had a friend, she was spending a hundred and- Lots of hearts from Sue. <laughs> Lots of hearts. She was spending $125 a month buying kombucha. When you're brewing it like this, it comes out to be about $2 a gallon. So cost-wise, it is way more affordable. And personally, I started off brewing. But health-wise, how, how often should you drink it? Uh, I, I may, maybe, is that a better frame? Oh, I think we should be doing some type of fermentation or probiotic daily. So however you want to get it in, um, I like going the natural way, the way things were done, you know, many, many moons ago. And it's so simple and so easy. And since we've eliminated soda and all of those other things that are full of sugar and artificial flavors and that really are just terrible for our body, you know, drinking this is a way to help boost our bodies. And, and that's what we need to do. it doesn't cost three dollars a bottle anymore. No, and depending on what kind you're buying, it's costing three to seven dollars, 
you know, for store bought. At the store. At the store. And um, I started brewing mine at home and loved it. And I, a couple times I was out there, oh, I'm so thirsty. I'll just buy a bottle of kombucha. I couldn't drink it. I thought it was awful. Uh, but that's just me. Maybe I got spoiled from brewing my own. And You did. I did. <laughs> But it's easy and it's affordable. And but the other stuff's good, you know. If you start drinking the store bought stuff enough, you acquire a taste for it. But then, once you try some of Renee's over here, my mom's, uh, there's no turning back. Have you ever used monk fruit or stevia? S T E V I A. No, stevia. You would not. This is the one time you're strictly using an organic sugar. We're what, not using stevia. What's monk fruit? M O N K. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm assuming that would be a fruit. And are you asking on that regarding? No, she's a asking. Second. Have you ever used monk fruit or stevia? I'm assuming so. Stevia is a sweetener. Is monk fruit a sweetener also, Sally? I have done second ferments at the end in, like, let's say I bottled it and I want a quick change of something. If I have, like, some organic grape juice, uh, I can be done right there, and that's a good fra flavor. When I've done a pineapple and I cut out the core and the hard part, I love to put that in and get a pineapple flavor. That's a sugar, sugar replacement. A sugar replacement. No, this is the one time you definitely want to just use the organic sugar. So you could use those other things and other recipes, but when it comes to kombucha, you want regular sugar. Is there another question there, Drew? No, no I just, it makes me want to bring up the fact that it eats the sugar and it's not, it's, it's a very low sugar drink if you let it sit long enough, the more. Oh, absolutely. The longer you let it sit, it's going to be more on the vinegar spectrum. And literally, like I said, if you let it go long enough, you are going to end up with straight vinegar. Like I was at my sister's and she's like, Renee, my family won't drink my kombucha. Try it. So I took a big old slug and I, oh, Santa spit it out. And I'm like, are you kidding me? This is like vinegar. I won't even drink it. And I love kombucha. I'm like, girl, stop serving that. Um... There's also what's called a continuous brew question. Uh, Victoria asks, would you recommend having another glass jar to start another batch while drinking the initial? Yes. I think it's really important if you're taking, uh, if it's taking 10 days to two weeks to brew a batch, that to have another one gallon. That's why I have five gallons going in rotation. And that doesn't necessarily mean they're all going at the same time. Like, Let's say I'm going to be busy or I'm going to be gone. I can let this one sit for over a month, and that is not a problem. The only thing that you need is you need to make sure there's liquid. If there's not liquid and this dries up, you're going to end up with green fuzzy mold. And at that point in time, green fuzzy mold, you pitch everything, you disinfect, you clean, you wash your cloth, and you start on all over. The one other thing you don't want to do is you don't want to use cheesecloth. On top, cheesecloth, the weave, is very open. And what can happen is you can get fruit flies that will go in. It has not happened to me, but I have heard of it. And they lay eggs in your scoby, and that's just plain old Dude. nasty. Yeah. So, um, and if you do have an issue with fruit flies in your house, they will land on top of your cloth but can't get in. And so you come in with a vacuum cleaner, <laughs> going on the fruit flies. Okay. Maybe I've done that a time or two in my house. And Megan just joined us as well. And Welcome, Megan. And Thanks well for coming as, in. Oh, I'm going to but, butcher your name. I apologize. M M Mel Meloni as well has okay. joined us. Thanks for joining us. So again, I will... This is Renee Pokoy with Organic Stepping Stones. Can you use Ninja glass containers? Oh, that is a beautiful thing. And I just happen to have one down here with peppermint water in here. So if you drink Ninja Red, it's a great glass that you can use. Again, never plastic. You don't want to use plastic for any type of fermentation. I don't know if I would brew in it, though. No, you're not brewing in it. When you're done brewing in it, to store. Because... Yeah, so after you've brewed it, you're putting it into mason jars, you're putting it into flip-top bottles, half-gallon jugs, empty Ninja Red, any type of glass is a good way to go. Flip-top jars. Flip-top, flip-top bottles, absolutely. So, you know, those are a great way to store it. I personally like my kombucha room temperature, so I will usually just go to one of my gallon jars, put it in my cup, and a lot of times, especially in the summer, 
I like to dilute mine, so I will do a quarter to maybe a half of kombucha, and then I like to fill mine up with water, just refreshing, because I really want to drink more, and I want more fluid, so, and I even know with children, my friend Rachel and I, and of which we have RR fermenting, it was Rachel and Renee, uh, her children at a small age, and again, she would put a small amount of kombucha topped off with a lot of water, again, for the kids to drink. So we will record this and like it, share it. And do we have any other questions? I, I go If you could go through the steps again, just to refresh all of us, because this is all, even I'm your son, but all new to me still too. And guess why? Because I make it, I bottle it, and they go in the refrigerator and drink it and then say, Mom, the bottles are empty. Hey, I clean it. <laughs> I also fill them. He does. He does. So kudos to you, Drew. Thank you for helping. So again, for kombucha, you're going to bring your pot of water to a boil, and you're using a clean water, not tap water. Two tablespoons of an organic tea, preferably black and occasionally green. One cup of organic sugar, bring the water to a boil, add these, stir it, cool it to room temperature. Take your cover off, strain so your tea leaves don't go in there, fill it to the shoulder of your glass container, mark it with a sharpie, and then in 10 days to two weeks, try it out. Uh, you'll cover it with your cloth and cover it with a rubber band. That's it, folks. You can do this. And uh, Victoria asks, how do you order the kit? On your website? Question mark. Uh, on the website, absolutely. Or you can contact me directly and we can make arrangements and I can get it shipped out. Absolutely. And if I'm going to be driving by your area for any reason, I could do a porch drop. I don't go in these days, but I do porch drops. I've done that a few times in the last few days on some other items. So I could do that also. Megan asked, if you've never drank it before, should you ease into drinking it? Yes. You definitely want to ease into drinking it because you're pulling out all the gunk out of your body. And if you do it too fast, you're going to have die off. Uh, you, your stomach will not feel good and the bathroom will be your best friend. <laughs> so start off with four ounces and listen, see how your body feels. And, and I think that's really important, not only today, but always. When you're consuming something, a little while later, how do you feel? Are you sluggish? Do you feel good? Do you feel off? Do you feel energized? Pay attention to that, people, and you will know the things that you should and should not be consuming because your body's going to let us know, but sometimes we're in such a hurry, we, we don't pay attention to that. So start with four to eight ounces, see how you feel, and you can increase from there. Right now, I have no problem drinking I could drink a whole one of these. I could eat dilly green beans, sauerkraut, and all that, and I'm good to go. But I've been doing it for a long time. Oh, and, and Dawn has joined us, joined us, and thank you for answering Sue's question, Dawn. You bet. Thank you, everybody. Um, so maybe talk about when your next class is, what, what it's going to be on. Yeah, I've been thinking about this, people, and I. this is two Friday nights in a row. Should we go for a third night? And I'm not sure on the topic. I was debating we could do uh, bone broth. We could do sugar scrub. We could talk about nutrient-dense food or anti-inflammatory foods. We could talk about essential oils. So give me a shout on some areas of interest or even ones that I haven't mentioned because you know I kind of like to talk a little bit. You might have noticed that. And I'm all about health and I'm about community. And right now, since we're all at home, I think this is a great way for us to connect. So yeah, in the comments, give me a shout out on topics and we could plan for, Drew, are you available next Friday at seven o'clock, same time, same place? Absolutely. Okay, let's shoot for next Friday, seven o'clock, same, say, ah, same place, here. <laughs> and keep, keep paying attention to the Facebook page because we will create the new event 
and we will invite everyone to it and we'd very much appreciate it if everyone could invite your friends as well and share the message as much as possible. I would like to see us start the stream with 20 people and that would be so huge and awesome and we would appreciate all everyone's engagement as you have all wonderfully done so much today. Uh, looks like we're going to be looking into ginger beer as a suggestion for Megan anti-inflammatory from Victoria, and a sugar scrub from Jenny. Uh, so we got some content to look into. Mom. All right, all right, I love it all. And the one other thing that is really, really important to me and always has been, um, and why I do this is I had to figure it out on my own and I'm here for you guys. And once you know and you can share it with somebody else, it's improving their health. And, and that's where the community piece comes in. So thank you, everybody. Have a wonderful evening, a great weekend. Stay safe, stay healthy, make good changes. And See you next week. Thank you, Nancy and Don and Sally and everyone else. We'll, everybody. We'll